Well, hello my dears, we're going to do a few more fall touches today up in my room and then I'll be moving on to Christmas. But I had some ideas that I just really need to get off my chest before I have to wait a whole nother year to do these things with you guys. The first thing I want to do is tackle this quilt. I found this beautiful quilt from Threshold at Goodwill and it's a queen size, so nice size. And I don't know if I have mentioned this before, but Goodwill has a some type of a collaboration with Target and they get the old products. And I'm talking hearth and hand, threshold, opal house, the good, the good brands. And so I will oftentimes get my decorations from Goodwill that I would have got at Target. They are more pricey, but it's still, I think it's still worth looking. This though was not packaged, so this actually was donated and I paid $12 for it. So I've been interested this year in block printing. Are you familiar with block printing? It is a form of basically stamping fabric and I mean it's really taken off in the last couple years with that English cottage look. It's just so incredible for pillows or curtains. Actually my living room curtains have a lot of a block print feel to them. I also of course am interested in DIYing my own block printing so I took a class by Create Academy, createacademy.com. You're going to want to check out that, that site because they have the most beautiful online classes for creatives. So I took the block printing class. It was called Master the Art of Block Printing. And the gal is incredible. She, this is her passion. She travels to India every year and learns more about actual carving of the wood stamps and things. So she clearly is more invested than I am in the topic. But it was really interesting and I, <laughs> I'm going to take the most basic version of block printing and we're going to try the, that today. First of all, you're going to want to figure out what your stamp shape is going to be. So I love, as you know, to bring in the story and the sentimental value in whenever I can into my decorating. So I went outside and I tried to find oak leaves off of the huge oak tree on our property that I love so much. And I found two that were just small enough. So once you have this shape figured out that you want to use for your stamp, you need to pick out some paint. And anything really goes as far as paint. I mean, any chalk paint, latex, acrylic that you have will work. So I just went ahead and pulled some neutrals that I thought could be good. And actually, a lot of sample sizes are good, for, I think, to use up for projects like this. So, I mean, I have some Annie Sloan, Portola paints, some Sherman Williams. Actually, this Pro Classic is the color of my mantle up in my room. So, anyway, I need to pick out a paint color. So then, you're gonna need a potato. And then I get these little sponge, I think they're called dabbers or dodders or something. You can get three of them at the Dollar Tree. And so, these, you're gonna want something like this to actually put the paint onto your stamp. Okay, so you saw me get a feel for what I liked. I held this in front of the mantle. I marked them with a black dot. So I really liked this uh, Annie Sloan French linen color. This one was a little bit cold and a little bit dark. This was too light. Uh, I forgot what I thought about that one. That one's actually really pretty. Really similar to the French linen one. Oh, you know what? It is French linen. Oh. oh my gosh, I had two. They just look like the cover, the cans are different. And then the same thing happened over here. I chose, I marked these two, which are Annie Sloan Country Gray, but I thought they were different paints. They're just different labels. 
<laughs> it's funny. So clearly I'm drawn to the French linen and the country gray. I've got some ideas. I think I'll use both of them. But for the quilt we'll do country gray because I feel like I have a, a lot. Okay, next step, potato. We're making a potato stamp. So I cut it in half lengthwise. And then here's my two leaves. I kind of think I like the larger one. I feel like, it, I hope I'm not wrong on that. I think I like the larger one because it'll be even clearer what it is, but this one's not flat. So I have to kind of flatten it on my potato. And then I'm gonna trace it with my knife. I'm gonna cut it out. Cut off maybe an eighth of an inch so that the little bit, the little leaf is the only part sticking up. I also think maybe a little line down the center would look good. Okay, I don't know how cute that is, but we'll try it. I'm feeling a little self-conscious about my leaf that I made. So I just I just want to try it. So here's my little leaf. If I don't like it, I might do the smaller one. And the thing that you have to get used to is that every leaf, yeah, that doesn't work. Every leaf is gonna look different. Oh, it's actually really cute. Hard to tell in this color. Um, do I like the size of it? You know, I think I'm gonna make this smaller one. I think I am gonna do a little leaf. Okay, I did another one, and I really, I like this one. This is it. This is our keeper. A little bit more believable, a little bit more realistic, right? So the only thing is the little stem is like barely there. I might just come back with a tiny brush and draw my stem in. Okay, here we go. Yeah, that's it. Okay, let's begin. We're just gonna start putting a leaf in every diamond. I suppose as I get, as I go along, I'll get more comfortable with how much paint to apply. Right now, I'm just trying to get a good even coat and make it pretty smooth. Do I want more lines in it? Now's the time, I need to make that decision. Okay, I put more lines in it. So that one, you are, you'll you know the secret, that the one, there's this one on there that doesn't have all of the veining. <laughs> okay, now, my teacher said I have to be comfortable with the fact that every leaf is different and that's not a bad thing. Oh yeah, I really like that. That's, that's not a bad thing, that's just part of the charm of block printing. So here we go. I'm gonna do all my diamonds. We're gonna let it dry, and then I'm gonna just go over it with an iron, with no steam, to set the pattern. So think about what shape has meaning to you. I mean, we can always just do any kind of flower or something, but it's really special when you can, you know, use a sentimental symbol. So always opt for that if you can. Should be pretty simple, pretty small. I think if I were to do the backside, maybe I would do a little blue, a little blue flower or something. I keep wanting to get the paint out of the lines. You can't see it but there is a cat under this table who is attacking my feet and thinks it's really funny. <laughs> my little pal. I love that this quilt already has parameters for me to work within. It's probably a good way to start for beginners. Use paint you have, get your little sponge daughters at Dollar Tree, grab a potato, you know, I just really believe that, you know, we can we can splurge and, and there's high-end things that we can buy and I don't think there's any problem with that if you can afford it and things go up and down in life. But there is just really, when you understand DIY and the you have products on hand and you just, you just know techniques like this, I'm telling you, there is just no reason for you not to have a beautiful space to live in. I really believe that and I hope that that comes across on my channel. I want it to be encouraging to you, whatever's going on in your life. Grab a potato and some extra paint and do something beautiful.
Okay, here's the finished look, and it is not what I was wanting. It has a very babyish feel to me, and I feel like the beige is way too last season looking. Looks kind of cheap. So, I think I might, I haven't actually ironed this with the low heat iron. And I am going to try to throw this in the wash and start over. I need something a little more dainty and more detailed, and so I might do something like this. Yeah. I need to rethink this. So, more color, more detail. Acorns. Okay, I'm going to keep working on this, but you understand the principle. So, let me wash this and see what I can do. So you remember last month, I think it was, I did a collaboration with Brooklinen and you got these beautiful golden sheets and we love them. We've had several conversations about them since, about how much we love going to bed at night because they're so dreamy and, and cozy, especially this time of year, it's pouring down rain a lot in Seattle. And so it's just really nice to have a really cozy bed. But what I did not know is that they also have this other company called Marlo, M-A-R-L-O-W, and they make these incredible pillows. So I'm super excited to try them out next because I'm already sold on Brooklyn and Sheets. I, I don't think I've ever talked about it on here, but I was in a terrible car accident, would have been in 04, and damaged my neck really badly, like, broke part of it and have I've actually had seven plastic surgeries to rebuild the top of my scalp that was taken off in that accident and I still see a, a specialist for my neck every month so me being able to sleep well I've tried a lot of different pillows and it's tough I how you sleep and how your neck is positioned is really really important especially if you have any injuries like I do and then my husband, who, when he is stressed, he will snore. So I always know what's going on with his stress levels by that fact. So we have tried different things and I really want to try the Marlowe pillow. They're actually adjustable and I'm going to show you what I mean here in a minute, but they're adjustable so you can make them firmer or less firm. They have this cooling gel in them that's all chopped up and mixed in with the foam because a lot of people overheat when they're sleeping. And I'm allergic to down feathers. So I figured that out one time when we had little chicks in our house that we were raising by the wood stove and you have to keep them under the heat lamp for about eight weeks. And I got so sick from those little birds. And that's when I figured out I'm allergic to feathers. So out the birds went, we don't do that anymore. And I mean, I have feather pillows. I love feather pillows for decorating, but when I'm sleeping, I just can't have the feathers by my face like that. So they, I'm really interested in these down alternative type pillows. I don't want the polyfill that gets all matted. I want the fluffiness of the feathers, but the Marlowe pillows actually have the down alternative in there. So everything seems like it's gonna be really good. I think these would make really good gifts for people in your life that have had injuries or you know are struggling with sleep. I'm just thinking like for your parents or somebody, if you're on the younger end of things, or maybe it's for yourself, but if you don't know what to get, say your dad or somebody for Christmas, this might be really good. And right now they are offering a special. I actually don't do sponsored work with people unless they give me a coupon for you guys. So I'm happy to say that they're offering 25% off when you buy two and 40% off when you buy four. That's a heck of a deal. This part is really interesting to me, the zipper part. So the zipper feature. So if you like your pillow a little bit fluffier, you're gonna wanna unzip these edges. My husband like doesn't like fluffy pillows, so we're gonna zip his up, and now it's just a little bit firmer. 
So that's an interesting feature that they offer. I've never seen that before. Okay, so update on the quilt. I'm just leaving this in here so that you know that you're not the only one that gets frustrated with your projects. I did not like how it turned out. I couldn't redeem it. I put it in the wash. I bleached it. Let me just show you what it looks like. I didn't get the whole side stamped before I started getting worried, but um, this is what it looks like. I just, you know what? I. I don't even know what to do. I just got so frustrated with this block printing. I'm glad that I showed you how to do it. I'm glad that yours is gonna go a lot better than mine. But I just needed to take a step back. Maybe I'll revisit this another time with you. But for now, we're just gonna use the white side of the quilt. And I still really like this. Okay, I don't wanna talk about this anymore. So I'm gonna share a few things that I got at the thrift store to incorporate into my decorating. First of all, I found these cute boots at the DI, which is short for Deseret Industries. We have one now in our area and it's it's really nice. It actually feels kind of like a Ross and then there's a lot of nice clothes. So these boots were $10 and they're not Hunter boots, which I do love that brand, but they have this still very, very beautiful classic style to them and I thought maybe they would look pretty next to the mantle. Okay, and then I got a bunch of these they're actually pewter originally from garage sale. Different candlesticks, different heights. And I just used rub and buff and changed these to look more like more of a matte gold. I like the antique gold color for rub and buff. Now this, this I'm actually really excited about because I feel like it's a good go-to for fall. You wanna get some beeswax candles. So that color, just natural beeswax is just a perfect yellow tone for fall decorating. So if you're looking for a perfect yellow, that's what you want to get. And that way you're not trying to buy yellow candles and not knowing what colors are coming. Get the beeswax. So then I saw on Pinterest, someone put wheat inside of a Reese frame. A Reese frame is just glass and it has gold edging around it. Oh, I need to clean this one but they're my favorite frames. I just feel like they elevate anything that you put in them. And I'm always interested in different ways to use them. So in the spring, I'll put a fern frond in one. And this season, I wanna try wheat because I feel like, of course, it's very it has a very fall feel to it. What I don't know is if it's too thick. So I'll have to kind of crush the wheat before I put it in. And as you know, I love bittersweet. I have several bushes out in my yard, and so it's just a no-brainer to go cut some bittersweet. If you have leaves, even I think some evergreens would work well this time of year. Definitely oak leaves. Ooh, oak leaves spray-painted gold. That would be really good. So something from the yard free. Then I found two of these actually at the DI. These were $4 each, and, there, and there's a set of two of them. I am going to paint the mat. It's not actually even a mat. It's, it's a piece of cardstock, so I'm a little disappointed in that, but we're going to fake it. We're going to fake it till we make it. And I am not above painting a mat on a picture frame. And last of all, let's talk about Dollar Tree books. Okay, so if you need hardback books, which we all do, you need them. Need hardback books in your decorating. Did you know that you can go to the Dollar Tree and look through their hardback books and you just want to take off the jacket and find ones that have a really pretty spine on them? 
So gold lettering, if you can get like a linen texture, you're, you're good. And what I really love about this book are the edges of the pages. They're different lengths or kind of that have that torn look. I really scored with this one. So another thing, one of my behind the scenes girls in my decorating group says that she does with these books is she'll rip the covers off. So if you have a craft idea, DIY idea that has books with no covers on them, this is a really good way to get inexpensive books. Books have just gotten really expensive. The trend has really taken off and you can pay $7 for a used book. And so the Dollar Tree is the way to go sometimes. You can tear the covers off. She'll even give them to her kids and say, go out into the driveway and just beat these up and bring them back to me so they look old and worn. And hey, I'm not above that either. So, okay, let's run upstairs and do some styling. I didn't like it. I'm having paint problems this week. So I ended up mixing up, I tried to do a little custom color that matched my Brooklyn and sheets. And I like it a lot better. So these are gonna go up on the mantle. Let's get this mantle styled up. Okay, reporting back on sleep after I've slept on a Marlowe pillow. I decided I like one zipper zipped, one zipper open. So that gives you three options. I hadn't thought of that before, but you get three options with the Marlowe pillow. So you can have them both zipped to make it extra firm. You can do halfway by having one of them unzipped, or you could unzip them both to make it a lot more fluffy. Now here's two things that surprised me, I hadn't thought about. I have these lashes I have lash extensions and it's a little tricky to sleep in them and I'm, so I'm always trying to like keep my face lifted up like this a little bit so I'm not crushing the edges right or of course like not sleeping on my eye the Marlow pillow lifts your face just enough where it protects your lashes so that was great and the other thing I thought of is that it looks like a pillow. It looks normal, right? So a lot of times if you get something that's ergonomically shaped for your neck or kind of there's anti-aging pillows that help your, you know, lymph nodes drain properly while you're sleeping and things, but they look like they're ergonomically correct and they're not, you can't put them in a pillowcase, you can't style them on your bed. So the Marlowe pillow looks like a pillow and you can put it in any type of beautiful pillowcase that you want and mix it in with your regular look. So I love that, of course. And don't forget, they are offering you a deal. If you click on the link in the description and you order two pillows, you get 25% off. If you order four, you get 40% off. All right, you guys, that's it for this week. Let's move on to Christmas next. I'm very excited. We're gonna start filming today. I'll see you next week.